Well, welcome to Vespers at Freedom Village. My name is Chaplain Michael Hales and we're here for a Christian service and we go through the liturgy of the day, the scriptures, and we pray and I'll give you a little message. So starting with our psalm today, it's so Psalm 149 verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Amen. Lord, help us to raise up a new song for you. A song celebrating the journey of getting to know you. Songs of praise and joy. Songs of faith and glory that we do not stop singing and humming even when we go to bed. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Exodus chapter 12, 1 through 4. And the Lord tells Moses and Aaron his plan. His plan for the Passover. Stating, this is something I'm going to place into action which is so important you'll set your calendars by it and remember it every year from now on. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. When the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs shall they eat it. Do not eat 
any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the guards of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. Thanks be to God. So God has a way, he's going to let Egypt know who he is. And it's actually also the same for Israel. Because Israel also needed to be brought back to knowing who God was. They'd been slaves in a foreign country for so long. They needed to know again who their God was, who their God is. He says it in this line, For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. This is, a this is a message we all need to remember. God is the Lord. Today we do not appear to be slaves but in some ways we find ourselves in slaves to the things of this world and not being mindful of the strength, the hope, the power, and the love of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to renew our thoughts each day with your love, that we can be fresh in a new song, of joy glorifying you. Many of us are anxious to hear your plans for our future. Many of us need a new way of looking at our world. To look through the eyes of your love, Lord. We hear so much discord so much anger, division, so much bad news every day. We humbly ask for your presence and your power in our lives and those around us. Help us, Lord, to fulfill your commission over each one of our lives, that we could walk with the authority that you have given your church and with the power you have given through your Holy Spirit at Pentecost. 
Let us never forget our role of kindness, righteousness, purity, love, hope and encouragement to all around us, that we could glorify you, Lord, Heavenly Father. We lift up Freedom Village that your hand would move in our hearts, that every time we sit down to eat a meal, that you, Lord Jesus, would sit with us, that every time we remember our family, our loved ones, that you, Lord, would sit beside us. Help us, Lord, through your love to shine your light for our neighbours, our family and those who are hurting in this country, hurting from the pandemic, the racism, the loss of jobs and the destruction that's being reaped through the riots. Lord, we lift up all those in positions of power and authority, that you would direct them with wisdom and unselfish hearts for the best of this nation and for our communities. Knowing all the gifts that you have blessed this country with, that not one of them, not one person's gift, would be wasted, neglected, thrown away, or purposely suppressed. Lord, we lift up those who are in the health care system fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, that you would give them courage, your protection, your loving heart, and your patience as they work through these times of the pandemic. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Please join with me as we say the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our epistle reading today highlights our need to love and lead righteous lives. It comes from Romans, again, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. This is the word of the Lord. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is near to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, 
noting sexual immorality and sensuality, noting quarreling and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Paul, in this letter, again highlights the role of love in a Christian life. The writer C.S. Lewis outlines four different kinds of love in his tapes called The Four Loves. Using the four Greek words for love, storge or affection, phila or in English friendship, eros or erotic love, and agape or selfless love. All of these forms of love are alive and active in us. But it's agape love that Jesus points towards and we develop as we walk towards Christ and become more Christian. A selfless love. Jesus we know gave himself totally for us so that we could be in relationship with God the Father because his sacrifice cleansed our sinful nature and that was a, a gift of love that he gave us. Paul totally understands what it means and why we need to put on the love of Jesus Christ. Our Gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 through 20. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained a, your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two other along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is the word of of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Going back to being a teenager in England, growing up, and every Saturday morning there would be the top of the pops on the radio, and the program would go through the top 20 records of that week. In those days there were little 45 uh, records and it would start with the 20th and slowly work down playing each one as it went to number one and uh, that was number one was the top of the pops and so some of the records would only get to to number five in the charts or maybe number 15 but the really good ones would stay top of the pops for weeks. It's fun to hear the latest releases, the newest songs. And it reminds me of when John and Charles Wesley, were, who were the founders of Methodism as we know it today, were riding horseback. Everything they did was on writing from community to community that they had set up for teaching and hospitals and different things 
And while they were riding, Charles was on this, in the saddle writing songs. Charles Wesley wrote hundreds and hundreds of songs that way, and it must have been so great when they came to a, one of their communities for them to have a new song for the Christians to sing. Well, of course, it's still going on now. People are writing new Christian songs. A lot of them come with bass guitars and all the rest of the lineup of, of modern music. But they're new songs, and they're coming out. You can hear them on the radio all around the world. But it's not just the new song that the psalmist is talking about. It's the new energy that comes with it. The pure joy of really letting our hearts join with our bodies as we worship and glorify God. I miss not having community worship when we can really sing out our worship for the love of God. But in a way, we're in a new season now. This is Labor Day weekend, and it's sort of, Labor Day is always in America, ushered in a new season. Now we don't see the change in the weather in Florida so much, but in the north, where I think a lot of us have come from, it's a big change, and somehow, Labor Day, I noticed, always, on Labor Day, it got colder. You find all those um, gloves and sweaters and things that we packed away for the summer, we had to find them again and get them where we could put them on again because the weather changed. It was always amazed me. But it wasn't just the weather that changed. There was like this feeling, this vigorous feeling that we've come into a new season and actually there was a lot that we had to get ready for. We had to get prepared either for going to school or getting back into work in a new way where people had been on holiday and you, you, you ring up somebody and there would be a message saying, well, we'll be back at the end of August or whatever it was. Now people were back and they were engaged and they were on the move. Very American. And the other thing up north we had to do was get our houses ready for winter. Make sure the chimney was cleaned, bring in the firewood, and get all the other things ship shape. We also needed to get our minds ready for a long winter, get ourselves prepared. Now in the Exodus reading, the Old Testament reading, God warns Moses and Aaron. He's preparing to do something new. He was opening up a new season for them a new way of life through something which was so significant that they would be setting their calendars by it and remembering it each day in the future. So God's love for the Israelites was warning them and preparing them for something that he was going to do. He was warning them with specific instructions as to how to be ready so that they would not have their firstborn killed when the deathly plague went through. You probably notice also that in the other two readings there's also God expounds a period of waiting where God's talking to Moses about the tenth plague in the Exodus reading, so there have been ten plagues before this one, there's been a period of time where God was hoping for a change. And then when, if we realize that a fellow believer has gone off the tracks and we go to them independently and say, look, I think you're going wrong here and they, they can't hear it, we take 
two or three people with us and we say it again. I, you know, we think that something is going wrong for you here and, and they still can't change. The next step, after we've been patient this long, is going to be, we're going to say this in front of the whole congregation. And in, in, the, in the letter from Romans, Paul says, Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. Paul wakes, warns us to wake up from sleep. There's a time element involved in all of these. and There is an element of God's patience. His patience is still present with us today. But we can't forget, we can't forget that there is an element of time. How long can God be patient? For what? Before we pay attention to Him. Before we pay attention to the Lord. And that's what He wants us to do is to recognize Him as God. And there are consequences when we do not recognize God as Lord, but instead place ourselves in that station or that office of God. When we become our own God, we will not be able to love agape love. We will find ourselves to be unable to love in that selfless, loving way that Christ has shown us. As Paul says, love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. In this new season, we need to look carefully at our own hearts. Do we want to live without agape in our lives, without love for others? Or are we going, are we going to sing a new song for real caring for others, others who do not have what we've been blessed with? for really putting our energy behind the change towards a more loving life, a more open life, a more godly life. Our God is a loving God and we are called into being loving as well. Let's look towards being more loving in these times of trial to our neighbours, to our community and across our nation. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Well I pray that you have a good week this week and that you can feel that our Lord is sitting next to you when you eat your meals or when you look at a, a photograph of your family that you know that he is right with you and now a blessing may the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you now and always Amen